Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Kingfisher's YouTube channel once again. Uh, don't forget to like our video, subscribe and press the bell icon for notifications of up and coming videos. Today I'm going to be talking about micro jigging um, as far as the reel, the knot to join it, the braid to use, um, how to set out your actual reel. Okay, as you know, most people, whether you have a jet ski, a paddle ski, um, a ski boat, it doesn't make a difference. Micro jigging is a very dedicated personal um, rod and reel that you would have. Um, the reason being the rod is a lot softer on the tip so it gives you the action but it's got a lot of backbone. Um, normally about six and a half to seven foot in length. Um, some guys do have shorter ones however but we'll just say six foot to seven foot. Um, I've chosen a BGMQ 6000 and the reason I chose it is because of its drag. It's got a 15 kilo drag uh, which is ideal for those bigger fish that you might hook on your smaller jigs. As far as setting it up goes, your spinning outfit, a four weave is by far the best recommendation that I can give you. The reason being braid has first of all less stretch in it, a four weave is thinner, it is also a lot cheaper. You will get reefed unfortunately you will hook those bigger fish that you can't stop and they will reef you so a cheaper braid is better. Like I said a four weave is thinner and the reason we use a thinner braid than a, an eight weave which is slightly thicker is that when you're sitting on your fish finder, you want to be able to go up and down as quick as possible to get on the spot. So you'll drive up onto the pinnacle, you'll see the fish on the north face of the pinnacle, you'll drop your jig down and of course you need to stay in that position as long as possible to work your jig up and down. Okay. Um, to load it, it's very, very simple. We'll be tying a figure of eight directly to the actual spool and I'm just going to go through it quickly and show you how we do it. Uh, BGMQ 6000, remember micro jigging is about enjoyment, it's light jigging. It's using small jigs, light weight, light braid and having fun. So it's ideal for boys and girls. Okay, here we go. So like I said, it's a very small compact reel, very strong, 15 kilo drag, um, absolutely brilliant for micro jigging. <clears throat> Remember, when putting on braid, you need to pack it tightly. If you do not, the braid will slide on the actual spool. On most of the reels these days, you will see, I'm just going to use this here, a rubber band on the inside. Okay. The reason they have a band is when your braid is on your reel and you tie the knot, the braid will still slip. It doesn't have any stretch to actually bite into it. So you'll see good quality reels these days will have that band just to allow the braid to bite into it. If it doesn't have it, you can however use, and I'll just grab it here quickly, some insulation tape, which once you've tied your knot, you'll wrap the insulation tape around the knot, and that will allow the braid on the outside to actually bite into it as well. Okay, so don't despair if yours doesn't have it, just use some insulation tape to wrap around it, okay. So I've got the J braid, 30 pound, and when micro jigging, anything 20 pound, 30 pound is what I recommend you look at. 30 pound is just a lot stronger, and again, we've got a 15 kilo drag, so 30 pound would be ideal for this reel here. 
Um, and it is a four weave. I'm just going to open this up. Okay, so there is your four weave. Now all we're going to do is tie a figure of eight. And again, how we do it, just take your finger, double the line, and remember to wind it around your finger three times. Once, twice, three times. Don't forget, there is a link at the bottom of your screen to take you to knots, and it will show you how to tie the figure of eight a lot slower. So there's our figure of eight. All I do then is go around the spool once, twice. Okay. You then slide the braid knot down, your figure of eight, and pull tight. And we just cut off the tag in. There it is there. So now what it does is it does not slide under pressure. Okay. I'm now going to go to my line winding machine and we'll fill the reel. Remember with uh, micro jigging, vertical jigging, never to overfill your reel. You don't want the line to fluff off and you're also not throwing, so you don't need distance. You're just dropping straight up and down. Remember that. Okay guys, I've got a lovely line winding machine here at my shop, but if you do not have one, you can use um, pretty much a stick, pair of gloves, dish towel, whatever it is, to actually hold the braid in place. And remember, braid needs to be put on tightly. That is very, very important. So for me, I'm just gonna use my gloves here, because it will burn. One pair of gloves, and uh, I've got a T-bar here, but you can use a screwdriver, whatever it is, get your wife, your brother, your sister, anybody to actually hold it in place so you can wind it on. Remember, it must be tight. That's the secret to it. Okay, so here we go. <coughs> uh, I'm just going to turn my machine on. Okay, three, two, one, here we go. And all we're doing is we're just winding it evenly. Remember? It must be wound evenly so it doesn't cut into itself, and that's important. Obviously, if you're doing it manually, the oscillation will do it for you. Yeah, I've just got to make sure that I wind it on properly for you. Okay, here we go. There we go. So there's our braid wound onto the actual reel. Remember, it's micro jigging. Do not overfill it. Okay. So now the next step is to tie a PR fluorocarbon leader onto it. Once we've wound our braid on, we need to tie our fluorocarbon leader onto it. And remember, because you're micro jigging and not casting, you can use a long piece of fluorocarbon, four meters. So, and, and the reason we make it long is a longer fluorocarbon is more abrasive resistant when going through rocks and that. And it gives you the opportunity to try and stop that fish before it gets to your braid. You don't want to lose your braid or damage your braid so put a long piece of fluorocarbon. It is invisible in water, first of all. It has very little stretch in it, so your hook set is very, very good. Um, and yeah, it just protects your braid um, a lot more. The one I recommend, FC fluorocarbon. Uh, this is the FC 100. And again, I'm using 50 pound, although it's 30 pound uh, braid that I've put on. It's just a lot thicker, it's a little bit stronger, and it will be a more abrasive resistance on the rocks. To tie it, we use a PR or an FG knot, it's up to you. I'm going to do a PR over here. Okay, so all we do is just pull off a bit of our uh, uh, braid. 
We take our 4X J braid, wind it through onto the PR bobbin, between the two O-rings over here. Pull it down till we get a little bit of a tag end, just lay the tag end over it. And you're gonna go around it about 10 times. Uh, let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten times like so. We then take our fluorocarbon. There we go. I'm gonna put this on this side. Another way of doing it so you don't waste too much fluorocarbon is just to take, take it, double it. like so and then just take your small finger and that will actually hold it in place so you've got all that tension you don't waste uh, a lot of the fluorocarbon when it comes to cutting it off at the end take our braid because it's thin we're going to wrap it around three times once twice three times around and our fluorocarbon just wrap it two three times is up to you okay Lay the two together, and I'm just gonna work up. You're not gonna tie a very short one like you would on, on a spinning outfit. You're gonna tie quite a long one, about that length, so here we go. And the reason we tie a longer one is because we're just dropping it, we're not throwing it. There we go. And to work our way back, we just lean back like that and, whoops, carry on going, there we go. Until we get to the end, a little bit more, there we go. So there's our PR tied, I'm just going to drop this onto the floor so I've got a bit of tension on it. Okay. We then take our tag in, wrap it around, go over to lock it in place. Like so. Uh, now I can let go of the line and actually pull tight on the actual knot and the fluorocarbon just to seat the knot properly. And don't forget, there's a little, um, what's that at the bottom? You just click on that and it'll take you to the knots and it'll show you how to do the PR or the FG. Um, not a lot slower than what I'm doing it now at the moment. Okay, so now I'm just gonna wrap the tag in around six times or five times, working alternative sides. That's one to the right, two, then from behind again, three, from the front, four, and from back, again, five, just pull the knot just to make sure everything's sitting properly, lovely, and then what we're going to do is a reverse risotto, so we're going to cut the tag end a, a little bit shorter, there we go. And now for the reverse risotto, all I'm going to do is create a loop, like so. Take that through and go around five, six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Lay it next to the monofilament nylon and just give it a little bit of a pull. And then the reverse part of it is just to unwind this whole risotto. One, two, three, four, five, six, there we go. So you can see here now what will happen when I actually pull on the tag end, the braid runs underneath those six little loops and the six little loops are what actually holds it from coming undone. So there we go. Pull tight and snip off with your mustard braid scissors. There we go. And the fluorocarbon. 
We cut off as close as we can to finish off the knot. And there is the knot complete. I'm just going to take all undone. So there is our um, PR completed. Or FG, it's up to you. But there's the PR completed. And again, we're just going to make it literally four to five meters in length. And that just ensures that any abrasion that might occur when the fish does go into the rocks, you don't damage your expensive braid. Okay, so there we go guys, there's our reel ready. Don't forget, um, we do have these tracer um, jigs for the micro jigging from all different sizes, 30 grams, 18 grams. Um, there's a variety of colors in that. Uh, they're done by mustard. But what's important about this reel is a big handle. So when you're actually doing your micro jigging, that you've got something that you can actually hold on to. Um, small little handles, if you're fishing at 30 meters, 40 meters, you end up with a, getting what they call finger cramp, where the finger starts uh, cramping up on you. A nice big ball handle is very important, and that's why I recommend this BG. It is phenomenal, guys. Uh, lovely reel for micro jigging. There we go. Don't forget, all the tackle you see here is available from all leading tackle stores nationwide, as well as our Kingfisher branches. Go out there, do some of this micro jigging. It is phenomenal. You'll be surprised what fish species you actually catch when you're doing micro jigging. It is absolutely phenomenal, the species that you can catch on it. And it's fun and enjoyable. It is light tackle fishing at its best. Thanks guys, go out there and enjoy.